far who, who better. Who would you go for? I think, I, I think out of the, the, the possibilities, given it's mid-season, I think Stefano Pioli makes mm -hmm. a ton more sense than Spalletti. The other you don't think there are any risks attached to getting Pioli? Of course, there's risks attached to, to anything. But I think it would have been potentially worse to keep Giampaolo. Just to complete Spalletti, though, this business, well, first of all, this is a guy who had another two years left at Inter. Yeah. So you're looking at about 20 million euros over two years. Um, there's no reason to throw good money after yeah. bad with that guy. Um, it's when interesting, you're interesting in that, that, that from what's been reported, Inter was sort of prepared to do a severance package with him and he was holding out for all of the money on that contract it's and so the two sides, yeah. Tells you everything. And I, the other thing with this guy, I know, right, he got them, you know, we know how he got them into fourth place. It came down to one game against Lazio, which could have easily gone the other way. We should also remind ourselves that the big millstone uh, financially around Inter's neck is down to Nangolan, Perisic, and Icardi, who were all players. Well, Icardi maybe not, but the other two were two guys yeah. whose contracts he extended. Nangolan was a guy he personally wanted. And if Inter, before we talked about issues of depth and whatever, and Conte couldn't get everything he wanted, well, part of it is because of the brilliant decisions that this guy made. We also remember how badly they played at certain times, and he goes off message. This is not what Milan need right now. Spalletti might be a situation when, you know, you're thinking, I want to win now, last piece of the puzzle. He's not somebody to take you places. And the other big thing is he's not somebody who has a history of success working with youngsters. Mm -hmm. And that, on the other hand, is one of the things that Stefano Pioli makes Stefano Pioli appealing, I think, to the club. Mm -hmm. um, it's also my understanding that they feel that Pioli's style, especially in his last appointment at Fiorentina, um, they feel that he counterpressed really, really well. Pioli's a guy who keeps trying to update the way he plays. Sometimes he gets yeah. it, sometimes he doesn't. That's where they want to be. I don't think it's any mystery when you look at the very top, what they're trying to be. I think they have their, their slightly Germano files with this yeah. whole counter-pressing, counter-attacking, raise the tempo type thing. And Pioli can do that. Pioli has a history of doing that. Yeah, it's, I mean, he's, he's an interesting, I mean, it, it's funny because I feel like you could look at, I know you've named four players in that shortlist, but I do feel like, for certainly from a point of view of what's been attracting the most coverage in um, the Italian media and what seemed like it's been the most serious negotiations, um, Pioli and Spalletti have been the two front runners. And you look at them side by side and you sort of think to yourself, what's the um, criteria that's being used to seek out these managers? Is it just bald former Inter boss? Because they're quite <laughs> different. They're quite different. And Pioli, you know... And Stramaccioni should shave his head. Yeah. Um, Pioli is... is I mean, uh, I can't remember if this um, this etiqueta, this um, description label. for him label was was put on him by himself or by someone else. But he was styled at Inter. I think it was Moratti actually at Inter after Mourinho as the normal one, and he is like he's very down to earth. He's very the opposite of Spalletti. He's not someone who makes it about himself and has a big ego and carries himself around. He is someone who has conversations with players and as you say, is, is adaptable and flexible in his ideas because I don't think he thinks of himself as anything special. Mm, I think he just thinks of himself as, as a normal manager. He is that, but I do think he's a little bit emotional, if I'm honest. Um, I, I've, I'm a huge fan of his, but for me, again... So he's less emotional than Spalletti, you agree, yeah? <laughs> yeah. On the emotional... He <laughs> he's a lot more emotional than Giampaolo, no, who obviously doesn't have a pulse. I think, listen, I'm really like, sorry. For me, I'm going to say this again, and I know that it's a huge investment if you ever want for Spalletti, and the guy is crazy. I mean, he is actually crazy. <laughs> but in, in, in so many ways, I, I feel like if I'm a supporter of Milan, I would trust... Spalletti to get the job done a little bit better than I do. But uh, that's just my opinion. I think mm -hmm. Pioli is just another... Uh, we're not sure what's going to happen. And I think Pioli that's is... Where I'll assuming it is Pioli, which is, again, not it's confirmed. It's an assumption. Everybody's going with it today. It is, I think yeah. he's in pole position. Let's be very clear. He has not been appointed yet. We've seen this yeah. 101 times before. And Giampaolo could still be in a yeah. job because so far it oh, yeah, hasn't yet that. been communicated but by AC Milan that he has been let go. If Pioli is the appointment, in my opinion... In some sense, and I'm not saying it has to be then the end of the season, it might go the longer, but it's basically an interim appointment, which is not the dream. I get it. But we are in the middle of a season. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.